So I was born before I was born. My mother hated me and uh, because I was the her fifth child. And so she used it as the opportunity to scapegoat me um, and my father. She was very mad at my father and I, I'm sure. All of these, uh, this awareness has just come to me within the last couple of years. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it would have been uh, 2022 when he told me the veil was lifting and I began to realize um, exactly the extent of uh, my mother's hatred for me and how she taught the rest of the family members except for my brother who I'm sure raised me until I was age eight. Uh, he was put in charge of me, I suppose. And he loved me. He loved me so much. It was wonderful. But anyway, my point with this video is that the narcissistic abuse that I was born into never stopped. It didn't stop my entire life. It was a setup by the enemy. And I didn't realize um, how abused I had been. And then I ended up making choices in relationships from there on out, uh, according to the scapegoatism that I had inherited from the sick family dynamic. Well, fast forward today, uh, it's been a year. The Lord sought fit to remove me from uh, 600 miles from where I'm from and where all of this took place. I left behind a gaggle, I'll call them, a gaggle of narcissists, including an ex-husband who got a hold of our daughter, and she was trained by his demons, I would say. That's my perspective, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not up for interpretation. This is my experience. So, um, yeah, anyway, I left them uh, oh, just over a year ago. The Lord saw fit. He brought me to a new place. And he has been training me here. He's been allowing me to heal, have my own apartment for the first time in a long time, 35 years. I did have my own home, but um, I gave that up. And so, yeah, fast forward then today. Now, my experience, um, I do live in a building uh, full of people and it is public housing, but it's wonderful. And I'm just so extremely grateful. It's just the perfect setup. I mean, my rent is so cheap. I don't have to pay any utilities. We have maintenance that comes in when we have problems. And so anyway, there's a building of people and there was one man that, uh, this has been a month or two ago now, and I noticed that he was a man of God, or so I thought, from his countenance. Um, and I'm inquiring the Lord in this, but what ended up happening is I ended up going to church with him. And one day, a month and a half or two ago, and oh, but there were red flags that I heard coming out of his mouth. The fruit was rotten. Let me say that. Fast forward today, we had an interaction outside the building. He was coming in from his vehicle and I was walking back from the trash. And somehow, and I don't even know what the first part of our conversation was, but he immediately, and it was probably just a friendly hello, because, you know, I've distanced myself. I don't want to go to church again. It's not for me. And I didn't like what I heard coming out of his mouth. So I was just not going to go around him anymore or talk with him. And well, anyway, apparently he, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking he's a religious narcissist now because today we were outside and he's, he, he brought up this guy, this kind of probably crazy guy. Yeah, he's crazy. I would say demonic, you know, you know, filled with demons, I'm sure. Well, anyway, he hangs out here in the common room of our building, this particular guy. And yeah, it makes me a little nervous sometimes, but 
uh, it's none of my business either. And I don't live in fear. I live by faith. Well, this guy decided to, to like prod me about it. Well, did you see the way he was looking at you? And I, you, can you just imagine what he's thinking? This is the so-called so, so man of God who took me to the church that he goes to. And because he, it was a setup, another setup by the enemy, this religious narcissist. And I, I called him out on it. This time I did not take it. I got it. I started raising my voice and I said, you know what? It's none of my business what that man thinks. And yeah, he's probably thinking some pretty bad things. And there's a whole lot of creeps around here. And I said, but I will not be bullied. And I mean, I was firm. That was the spirit raising up in me and I'm done with it, y'all. I have been the victim of more religious narcissists in my life than you can imagine. Churches, pastors, people that I looked up to who I thought were you know, really walking with Jesus. This was like, this started back when I was 19, just after I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. And uh, yeah, and it's too bad that, you know, I, I saw something on him. I thought that it was the Holy Spirit. I could see something there. And so this is what I'm out. I'm, I'm inquiring the Lord about this is, how is it that I perceived that he was a man of God. And yet now with all of these red flags, I could go, I have a list of, of red flags that I wrote down after this interaction because I am not going to feel or continue to believe that I am in some way the one who is mistaken in this matter. I'm done with this. I will not be bullied. Whether you're a religious narcissist, I would rather spend time with the demoniac that hangs out in the common area of this building than to be around the ugliest of spirits, which I consider the narcissistic religious narcissist. I mean, come on. It was vile. It was very vile. There is so much wickedness surrounding this man. And I'll tell you what, the eyes were dark today. When I looked in his eyes, I was searching for the light of the spirit. And when he was saying those things to me, try I don't know what it would have been he was trying to do. Was he trying to conjure up fear in me? Was he, he was, he must have these vain imaginations about who I am. He hates women. He hates women. I mean, that's, I, you can't help but think that. Wow. Anyway, I just, I don't even know if any of this made sense. I'm sure that some of it did. It does to me. And I want to encourage other, other chosen ones. And I call myself that because I didn't choose him. He chose me. And he chose me before I was born. My mother tried to curse me, and I suppose I did walk in that curse for many, many years. Obviously, I did, until I left Indiana and came 600 miles away. He brought me here, and I'm getting better every day, but I'm not going to tolerate the bullying anymore. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I'm glad I stuck up for myself today. I did. I confronted the bully head on. I said, I will not be bullied and I mean, I would, mm, it was great, y'all. But yeah, I want to encourage any other chosen ones, um, any other survivors of narcissistic abuse, perpetual, consistent, uh, you know, through our lives. I'm 60 now, and so it's been a long time. I married a narcissist. He got a hold of our daughter, you know, and, uh, but that's that's working out. That is working out. The veil is being lifted from not just me. It's so many of us, so many. Encourage you to stick up for yourselves. We will not be bullied anymore. We might be the misfits of Israel. I like that. We're the, the bummer lambs 
the tender-hearted little lamb, said God, who he chose and who he has had, his wing wrapped around. I see us as snuggled up in his lion's mane, the mane of the lion of the tribe of Judah, and I hear him purring because all of his little chosen ones are snuggled in his mane, being protected. I'll just leave you with that thought. That's one of my favorites. <laughs>